Hey, everybody, welcome back. Devin, the OG, the original Grognard here for Lock and Load Publishing. And oh my, look at this. What are we? We are here back doing some point blank V for victory. And we got a special guest today, Mr. Keith Tracton. Hello, how are you? Glad I you guys could meet I am doing fine. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing so far so good, which is pretty good considering everything going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, what excited are we to be here today? What What are we doing today? We are looking at the new solo rules. Well, they're not new because I mean the game is new completely. Uh, we're looking at at how the solo system works. We're going to run for about half hour, forty five minutes, uh, time permitting, uh, and uh, we're going to try to get as much shown as possible so everybody has a good idea what uh the the solo system is and how it runs and i'm gonna be quiet and just run the camera and i will turn everything over to keith because uh mr keith is going to be showing us how this all works with some input from me <laughs> hi everybody oh a lot more input than devin suspects um thanks for coming by uh like i said it's gonna run about a half an hour 45 minutes if, if things get uh uh, really exciting. Um, the solitaire system is different from the regular game, but I guess I should explain. The regular game, you would have a hand of cards, and then uh, you deal out basically, you basically play out one action, um, and then any leader actions would also uh, motivate your troops to go do things, and it alternates back and forth. The deck itself is a turn, so when the deck runs out, that's one turn. This is actually a two-turn scenario. It'd be normally be two decks, but we're we're not even going to get totally into the into the first deck. We might. Um, we'll see how it goes. It plays pretty quickly, though. Um, this is the tutorial scenario, um, and I have elected that the artificial enemy opponent will be the Germans. Uh, and yesterday I, I played this as a fresher, and they almost beat me uh, badly. So <laughs> um, uh, we'll see how this goes. But the basic idea is that... Oh, actually, um, i got to draw a hand. So uh, there, uh, the, as, the, as a player, you're going to have a hand here of five cards to start. Now, normally your opponent would have five cards... Uh, I'm going to throw these into my hand, and I'm going to flip them over. And, Devin, I don't know if you can see my hand or not. Uh, um, I do have GM status, so yes, I can I can focus in on your cards. Okay, so this is my starting hand. Normally, uh, the other player would also have a similar hand. They would draw five cards. But, because you have the artificial enemy opponent, they don't have a hand. They have a table, um, which is on this brand new play well, player that's already in the game, but point blank player 8-8. Eight, eight, the AO action selection. So they are going to roll on this table to select an action, a card, if you will, versus uh, using the hand of cards. However, because time is based on the deck, to start the game, immediately what we do is we pull four cards um, to represent the AO's hand, and those are discards. Okay, so they can actually be flipped. All right, and then each time the, the artificial enemy opponent goes they're going to draw a card, so that sort of keeps the clock ticking. Um, as you do combats, I, I do recommend using the cards for the combat. You can use dice, but if you want to have the game be a little faster paced, be a little more unexpected where you can't quite predict the odds, I would, you know, unless you're a card counter, I, I don't recommend playing a card counter, um, then I would recommend uh, keeping the, the deck rolling by using you know, your dice for your combats and things like that. Um, so I we're going to jump right also, in here. I would also yeah. point out that if you do decide to use dice for any dice rolls, for every dice you physically roll, go ahead and pull one card from the from the action deck because that is the timer. Oh. So if you use the dice, you're going to, without discarding the appropriate amount of cards, you're going to extend the turn longer than it needs to be. Right. And I, I, I didn't even know that. There you go. So I am going to use dice, which we're not going to count out of the deck for the AO's table, though, because that's sort of, or like I said, the AO is just going to pull a card and that's discard a card to start its turn. So um, in this case, though, I think it's random to see who goes first. So I'm going to roll the dice here. I have a white die and a green die uh, over in the in the die roller here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but high roll, the green's going to be the Americans. High roll's going to go first. And that's me. Okay. So I take a quick look at my hand. And I'm going to play as fast as I can so we can get to the AEO stuff. Um, so I may make some mistakes. <laughs> um, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I have a, a unit action here. And I'm going to see if I can get my machine gun to move up into um, uh, into C1 from C2. Now, a unit action, just, just so you do know, on the unit card, and I'm blowing up the unit card for me. Devin, if you could blow up that infantry squad. Um, let me know when you have that up there. Um, yep. 
there's icons. There's four icons on that, and one of them is, the first icon is an arrow. That's the move icon. There is a summary of all these icons that I usually keep handy, uh, but again, I'm going to explain these as we go. Just real quick on this, this is move, and then this, the the air burst there is fire. Um, the puffy one is smoke, and then uh, that's recon with a plus two modifier. Is that right, Devin? No, it's concealment for them. To oh, concealment. I'm sorry. Concealment, yeah. A concealment plus, yeah, they can get back into concealment, uh, which gives them a plus two modifier in whatever terrain they're in. Um, if you're not spotted, you're concealed, and you get a plus two defensive modifier. Americans also have a very special thing for themselves, which is plentiful ammo, which uh, I'm not going to go into right now. But at any rate, um, so that's infantry. So when you do a unit action, it means you go to a card, and it can do any of the actions. Um, I'm going to do the move action. The move action, very simply, is to grab a move counter here and indicate that he is going to move to this, um, to C1, at the beginning of my next action, because you start off with an upkeep phase, and in the upkeep phase, you complete these moves, pick the terrain, that kind of thing. I'm done. All right, now I sometimes, personally, will draw the terrain now. We don't have to, just to save time. Um, we'll draw it when we're supposed to draw it. Uh, I draw a card to draw up, real uh, fast. Should, should, and... also, should also mark that uh, the infantry, since it didn't oh, fatigue. fatigued, and it is spotted. Yes. Right, he's fatigued. I thought the move counter meant that he was spotted. Either way, I just like to put the spotted marker on That's there. That's because... And I like to put the spotted marker on the terrain because it is an entire sector that is spotted. Everybody in the sector, not just one uh, unit. Correct. Card, also looks unit. like you didn't pull a uh, terrain card for the uh, Sherman in the back there. Oh, I did not. Okay, so th this particular scenario says... I'm sorry. Pull two terrain cards and pick the best or pick the one you want. Uh, so I'm going to say this... And this, oh joy, look, it's clear, or, you know, I've got clear for if you want. Did I mention we have some clear available? Okay, so the Sherman's sitting in the open. Um, by the way, the objective of this scenario, just so you know, is that bridge right in the middle. And one thing about, and, and Dev, if you could blow up the bridge. Um, yep. The one thing about objectives, is distinct from other terrain, is that not only do they have special abilities which are listed on a player aid, but the flags there indicate the number and type of flags that, basically that come from units, that you need in order to control the bridge. So here, it's two infantry flags. White is the infantry flags. Black means ordnance, which could be the bazooka or the panzer shrek or one of the tanks have a black ordnance flag. So, for example, yesterday when I was playing, I, I came to a draw because I kept the Germans off the bridge and I was sitting on the bridge, but I only had a white flag and a black flag. I didn't have two white flags because the German had been very successful in eliminating three out of my four squads. So that's where the importance of those flags come in. And a little bit of an anecdote about how, I, how the AEO, well, it did beat me, but came close. <laughs> um, all right, so the first thing we do is, again, is uh, discard a card. That's the first thing that the AEO does for there. And then, David, if you wouldn't mind bringing up the player aid with the table, I'm going to roll the dice in the background. And I always say the green die is first. It, I, th I think it's just, there are die combinations on this table as opposed as all, also totals. So I rolled a 2-3. Which is different, you know, on five, you can do one, four, and you two, three, but they're two different things. And, oh, the other thing is, uh, for the AEO, you have to determine a posture, uh, either attack or defense. And it's sort of like, you know, well, what are they doing in the scenario? Are they trying to take an objective? Um, it's a bit of a judgment call, but not really. In this case, I'm like, well, the Germans and the Americans are both attacking, so I'm going to say the, the Germans are in an attack posture. So any anything in this table where it says defense, po oops, hang on, it's wrong thing. Defense posture actions and defender notes. I'm looking at attack posture action and attack action notes for the two die six results. So right now I have a two three, and I go over to the attack posture action and it says move or flank. So if I can't move, I'll try to flank. In this case though, the AEO can move. Now the question becomes what to move. Well, the first thing is who has the lowest fatigue. Well, that's obviously all all four squads up front there. The second thing is um, you want to do a leader action. So I would want to move the guys with the leader. That's my tendency. Um, you want to take a closer look at uh, the rules themselves as far as you know. We, we could make a random roll. I kind of think the leader would be first. So well, let's make a random. Let's make a random. Well, we, we should also um, point out that there are several flow charts that dictate if you're in a defensive posture mm. moving, there is a flow chart that you follow what units to select, where to select, how they are. And it's this very elaborate. Sean has done a wonderful job right. on defining the flow charts. We just haven't been able to get the flow charts into the tabletop simulator yet because we're still working on the flow charts, but they right. will be coming. But 
And I, yeah, I know, but, we also we also had a question real quick. Uh, Vernix Alpha yeah. asks, is the map reduced by two as part of the scenario? Uh, and yes, it is. Instead of using all five of the areas, this specific scenario only uses three areas. So that's why the two areas off to the left here are not in play. So I'm yeah, I took I took advantage of that to to have the. Um to have the charts available so I could blow them up for myself. Um, so as I keep this, to keep this commentary going. But I will say, um, the, the distinction between if you roll a move, assault, fire, or a unit action, there are flow charts available for those. And they will take you through who goes first or what happens if you don't have anybody available. Um, let me see if I can find mine. I, I had mine up and running. Uh, no, it doesn't have it. Okay, never mind. We're just going to go with this. Uh, <laughs> so there would be a flowchart to determine um, uh, who have... Because if nobody can move, it will go to what's called uh, a discard action, a spend discard action. A spend discard action means you don't have the right action for anybody uh, in your hand, or in this case, the AO doesn't have it on the table. What you do is you spend a card you would have in your hand, or the AO spends its action by discarding that action, but now it can do any one action that it wants on somebody's card. Um, that means you're never stuck for the action that you need. Um, and that's, for me, that's actually what makes this game, that one little thing, makes this game unlike any other game because you're never stuck. Um, and that's really important in a card game. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to sort of jump it a little here. I don't want to spend time going look for the PDFs that I thought I had up, and I apologize for that. But so a move action, there would be a sequence to figure out who goes first. Roughly speaking, though, when you get to this point, Everybody's available to move. We're going to roll randomly to see. And it's usually the guys who are closest to the enemy that go first. So I'm just going to consider the infantry and not the tank. I'm going to roll real fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, left to right there. I'm going to roll in here. And I get a six. So this guy on the right in the woods is going to be the one to move. And so I'm just going to move him. And he gets a fatigue because the move action is a fatigue action. And uh, I'm going to do what Devin says and put a spotted marker on him. Yeah, for, okay, spotted for, means that. Yeah, good. Yeah, for for the most part, and since we can't show off the flow charts, but mostly the flow charts decide who is going to do the action by who has the closest, who has the lowest fatigue, and who is closest to the victory objective, at least on the right and, roster. And that's the way we're going to show you guys this. The nuance of it, you'll see when you see the flow charts themselves, and there is nuance to it. I mean, there, you know, there's. There's a lot more nuance when you have like transports and when do you get out of the transports and when do you get in. That's all in the flow charts. But again, specifically, it's for the move, fire, assault, and unit actions. If you have another kind of action, we're actually going to go consult the rules, which I do have it. For example, if you get a cover action, it's special for the AEO. A cover action for me, if I had, I actually have a cover action. If you can bring up my hand, Dev, yep. um, I believe my second from the left has a little shield on it. That's a cover action. If I'm shot at, I can play that to get an additional uh, plus two defense. For the AO, if he gets a cover action, he takes a cover counter, there is an actual counter, and sort of stores it. And then when you shoot at him, it can be used to give the AO a plus two. Um, in other words, he has one available. And so there's, anyway, there's that, a flow chart yeah. for determining that as well. Exactly, exactly. The small, there's some smaller flow charts for like the cover action, things like that. But they, they become second nature very quickly. But for the purposes of this demo, I want to just show you the major feel of the, the, you know, the, the, the squad with the lowest fatigue is going to go first. You know, squads that aren't shaken are going to go first, that kind of thing. Um, so that was it for the AO. That was, that was really fast. We picked their card, and now we're up to me. Uh, I am going to... Comp the first thing is the upkeep phase. Now, the upkeep phase for me, I go through a sequence of play on the, on the regular um, uh, player aid. Um, I and it, real fast, I would resolve melee and overrun. Then I resolve terrain placement, which is now, and this is when I actually place the card. But let me tell you the rest. If there's blazing terrain, I would make a morale check. I would ready all spent leaders. That's really important because if you've done a leader action, he's canted 90 degrees to the right. That means he's spent. It's like tapped in Magic: The Gathering. Um, and this is when he would re-ready at the beginning of the next uh, upkeep phase. I would button or unbutton any tanks I have or other AFVs. I can transfer support weapons between squads in the same area, same sector, uh, and then I can also combine half squads in the same sector. That's all in the upkeep phase in that order. So right now I don't have any melees or overruns. I'm going to do the terrain placement, and all I do is I pick a terrain card, and I drop it over here, and I flip it. And, oh, I'm not refusing that, or maybe I should. Okay, so I have a stone building. Now, 
this does, this is not a kind of terrain that it says it, it says I can refuse it. Um, I don't want to refuse it because I really want my machine gun in a stone building to be. That's what I wanted, a base of fire. Um, so I'm going to actually complete the move, and the move marker goes away. And Devin, you got to tell me if I am spotted because I moved in there, or if yes, I'm not yes. spotted. Yes, you are spotted okay, as, so, you, as you moved in there. Okay, so now I'm spotted, but and then the fatigue from the move again. Correct me if I'm wrong. When you first did the move, that's when you get the fatigue. Completing the move does not give you another fatigue. Correct. No. Once Correct. You, yeah. you get one fatigue per action, you are just completing the move that you started, so therefore you don't get another fatigue from actually completing the move that you started. Right. Okay. So, And there's a couple things to get used to, but once you do, the game flows very well. One of them is this, you start your move in your turn, in your, in your turn and then the next card draw, I mean your next card play... That's when your upkeep, that's when you complete your move, but then you're going to do other things. Because once you complete the upkeep phase, which we just did with this, now we get to do an action. So uh, I'm going to do very fast. Uh, I have a ready. Da -da -da -da. I guess technically I can. That's a ready, not a rally. Recon. Oh, why not? Okay. So I'm going to play this card. Um, yeah, I'm going to play this card, this action. Um, on this uh, airborne squad in B2, maybe here. And there's two things this card can do. This card can do fire, and this card can do a spotting attempt. Now, normally I, I wouldn't do a spotting attempt. I would, you know, maybe I would fire something like that. Um, but I'm going to try a spotting attempt for the sake of moment because it shows line of sight to some extent. So line of sight is also one of those things, along with movement, that takes a little getting used to. But once you do it, it it's really easy to do. Um, so line of sight between, and this, this applies to the AO too, that's why I'm, I'm doing it in the middle here. But basically, as I move this card here, the line of sight is from here, there's nothing there, so it doesn't block, to the bridge. And that's all you have to measure your line of sight to for the American. Then you do the German side of it, and the German is from here, this is where I'm doing the spotting attempt, I apologize, to here, to the bridge. You only have to go to this central sector, but you have to go from each side. Then you check the terrain on each side. So for the Americans, it was clear, and then there's obscuring from the bridge. So he has an obscured line of sight to the Germans. The Germans, they're in the wood building, which would be blocking if it were in front of them, but it's not, have clear and then obscuring. And so what you've determined is that the line of sight is, has an obscurement penalty, but it's clear. So we're going to make that spotting attempt. So I'm going to go to the spotting table real fast, which basically I need a three or less when I pull the card, the die on the card. Um... If it's, obviously, uh, the only modifier is... Degrading terrain actually does not affect the spotting check. Uh, blocking terrain would... Uh, I think it's... Is that block... If he's in blocking terrain, it's plus one to check? I think that's true. Yes. Right, so... Um, the plus one... So basically, I need a, a two... A one or a two on this die that I'm going to pull here. In order to spot. And I do! Woohoo! Alright, so the Germans this building are spotted, which is not good for them, but is good for me. I am done with my action. I draw my card. This is how fast this game plays. Okay. So now what do I do? I start the AO sequence. I don't pick up the whole deck. I just pick up the top card. Thank you. And I just burn a card. And then I roll the table. And these two dice. I'm going to try and roll these two dice. Oh, that was one. Hang on. I have another way to do this. Thing. It's not going to fox me. I have a 4 6, which is a 10. And so on the table, there is a 4-6 versus a 5-5. Five, five. So that, on the attack posture, that's a unit action. So when you get a unit action for... Um, when you get a unit action for uh, the AEO, now you've got to basically determine who's got the card. Uh, I think somebody's not muted because I'm making a lot of noise. Um, all the unit actions are on the card, and you have to determine which unit is going to do it, basically. Um, again, to forego the, the flowchart for the moment, uh, it's not going to be the, the infantry squad that has fatigue. It could be the one with the leader, it could be the other. I'm going to make a 50-50 roll, but that won't be what it, it will be on the, on the flowchart. Two, so the guy on the left with the, with the Panzer Shrek here, with the is that PZB 50, RPBZ 54, um, he's the one who's going to do unit action. His unit actions, Deb, if you could enlarge that. Yep. Our left to right, uh, move, fire, which could be handy right now, smoke, uh, cover, 
or excuse me, concealment, um, and then uh, assault. assault. Okay. Um, in this case, though, I think, and, and here you, you, it'll tell you what you should do. Uh, in this case, I think because the range of the bazooka is one, two, three, four, it's got a pretty good shot at a range of four. Um, the range, incidentally, I'm going to move the bazooka is one, one, two, three to this stone building. And uh, you kind of need a bazooka to hit a stone building. And just to show you guys what it's like, I'm going to fire that ordinance. Um, I do have range from the infantry squad itself, but I'm going to save that shot to see what the bazooka does. I will also so, point out that uh, the bazooka can't fire, be fired from inside a building. Oh, you will. That's right, I'm in a stone building. I'm always right doing that. Ah, <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Um, I'm pretty sure, though, if I fire the infantry squad, uh, that they're going to be spotted for no reason. Um, I don't think it has spotting status necessarily in the flowchart, but I'm going to go with the guys in the wood building that are spotted in the middle now instead of the bazooka for that reason. But this also gives us a good chance. Again, I'm going to try and fire... Um, because the machine gun that's in there, the MG42, definitely has the range there, and I will count that range out for you, because this is another thing to get used to, is counting range and line of sight when you're in a different area. Areas are the rows, top or the columns, top to bottom. Sectors are the individual squares. So, this machine gun, the range is one, two, three, four, five, to switch to another column. But its, it's range is actually five. So he's within range, and that's helpful. The other infantry are not, so, you know, the infantry themselves, their ranges are only two for the SS squad and three for the regular squad. Um, however, the leader can also affect this. So um, so we're going to fire the machine gun, so it's got the range. Now, the line of sight we have to check, though. So the line of sight, again, I'm going to check the German line of sight. I'm going to use the machine gun counter again. Is here to here, and it's obscuring. You count the Americans from here to here. And it's clear. So the worst is obscuring. If there'd been a second obscuring, that's too obscuring, and the line of sight is blocked. Is that correct, Devin? You would be correct, yes. Okay. So in this case, there's only one obscuring, so the line of sight is not blocked. So we get to fire this machine gun. So that's the unit action we're going to do, is we're going to fire with uh, that infantry squad, with that leader, guiding this machine gun. So the base is um, three, plus we get a die six for... The Germans, that's three plus three is six it, plus it would, one. It would, be, it would be four. Three for the machine gun, one for the leadership modifier. I was just going to add the leader. Oh, <laughs> just do it in a different order. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's seven. Um, obscuring on a direct fire, infantry firing, firing through degraded minus, minus one. Right. So that's a six because of that. Um, we're not at point blank range or anything like that. I, I'll do the modifiers really fast. That's it. There's not a lot of modifiers. So. Um, Okay, so they end up with a six, and then uh, the defensive bonus for the building is four. Uh, and so the Americans are going to do a die six pull plus four. Uh, if I can flip the card. Oh, there you go. Four plus one is five. So the differential is one in favor of the Germans. So the American squad's going to need to make a damage check with a plus one. And their morale is a six. So I'm going to pull two d6. I'm going to pull two of these. No, just, so the first just, one. Just one d6 on the morale. 1d6 plus the differential. I thought it was 2d6 no, for morale. Uh, 2d6 for morale damage when check. you're testing morale. Damage check is just 1d6 plus the differential. Oh, where are all these cards come from? Grab Did I pull half a deck? I think I pulled half a deck. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, all right, so here we go. So, 1d6. All right, so that was the one I pulled. Right. Okay. That was, so that was this their one. defensive role. Now it's... Right. Five so that, plus the differential. Which is one. And his morale is six. Yep. So he's, so good. he's good to go. However. but Now they fired, so they get a fatigue. And they're already spotted. Uh, and I believe that's it. Okay. So the AO went. They're starting to lay down some machine gun fire. Um, going to my turn. Uh, fire thing. I'm going to fire back. Um, actually, I don't think I have the range to fire back. I don't have the range for it. So that, my 30 caliber here doesn't have the range to fire back because it's one, two, three, four, five, and he only has a range of four. 
Um, so I think what I'm going to do then is I have fire, fire, ready. I'm sorry, ready or the helmet is rally? No, it's a ready action. Rally, it's a ready is, action. The, ra rally is the flag. All right, rally is get your shaking off. Ready is get your fatigue off. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to play the ready. Just for the sake of argument. Normally I wouldn't do this in a game, but there you go. I'm going to play the ready on him and pull this fatigue off. Now, I would get a second one, except there, you know, a second attempt, but there isn't another fatigue on it. Um, and then I don't really have a leader action to do because everybody's kind of in good shape. Um, actually, let me ask you this, Devin. Can I... No, I've done my... So, all right. Thing, and this is really... I'm trying to stay on point that this is really about the AEO. Again, the AEO burns a card. Doesn't matter what it is. Um, and then we roll two dice. Anyway, you want to roll two dice. And that's a 2-3. Or a 3-2. Let's see. 2-3, again, is a move or a flank. And again, if no one's available to... Then it proceeds to the flank. Uh, actually, because it's actually, attack it's marker. both a move and a flank. You get to do both actions. Oh, really? Yep. I thought I just read the other way around. Nope. Uh... Okay, I'm going to trust you. <laughs> uh. And uh, Vinrix Alpha just made a uh, made a comment. You have explained LOS really well. Blocking no, no LOS or two unique obscuring terrains between each unit. No man's land. No shoot. Yeah, that's basically it. You are absolutely right, correct. Right, basically that. Yeah. Um, this Devin, is there? Refresh my memory here, if I'm remembering something, or, or I shouldn't be. Objectives themselves are slightly different. Yes. They're not different. No, no. They have the they have the obscuring or the blocking on the, on the objectives, but um, yeah, that's all good. I, I I know I know where this question is coming from because in my head I was trying to make sure I had it clear, and I misread something that said you know if there's an obscuring. Uh, objective you're blocked i'm like no that's not right i completely misread the paragraph so right. yes it is actually as i've described it so, yeah, so and that's and, and basically what what some people may confuse is say this this sector here was shooting to this sector here you draw a line of sight these guys have got obscuring these guys have got obscuring but it has to be two unique obscurings right obscuring although it count although you count it you, you it almost sounds like you count it twice you really don't because it has to be unique right, right. obscuring uh terrain features yeah and i i want to do one thing about line of sight uh right out of the gate and again it, i apologize i will get right back to the, to the aeo stuff but the the u.s tank in the back here because uh this stone building popped up it's great for the infantry however it's terrible for the tank in terms of line of sight because whenever he's doing his line of sight he's counting one, two, three, and now it's blocked. He can't even get to here. So it doesn't matter where on the map he's looking, he's too far back and behind this building. So it can be really a pain. So those are the things it's like, wow, I'm going to jump on this building and maybe I should refuse that terrain because I want my tank to support me. Um, the tactical options immediately become apparent once you kind of get that uh, thing. So line of sight's unique, um, but it, it works really well. <laughs> um, it'll work even better on the wide too. Um, range is unique because, you know, again, when you can't left or right, you're going to count two instead of one. Um, but again, it's easy to get used to. Uh, and movement is unique because you kind of start it and then you resolve the terrain. You don't know what the terrain is until you get there. You can refuse certain terrains. Certain you can't. Like, I think mines, I think you can't refuse. Or wire. The nasty stuff you can't refuse. Um, and then we'll go from there. There's other things about terrain, but there we go. So back to the AO. Um, so I drew up he rolled his 2-3 uh, um, for move and a flank. So this is good because we're going to do a move. So the first thing is there are four units here eligible to move. And again, we will go to the flow chart to figure it out. And it'll take into account things like, you know, who's fatigued, who's not fatigued, who's shaken. But generally speaking, the unit that's closest to the enemy that has the least fatigue is the one that's going to do the action. In this case, this is the guy with the bazooka in the stone building. Now, it's like any other solitaire system. There's no such thing as cheating. <laughs> if you really think that something should be done, you can do something else. But all of us, having played this, advise, let it play out. <laughs> Definitely. Um, you'll be Because I, I mean, me personally, if I were playing this, I would leave that bazooka there. Despite the fact that he can't fire, he's in a good position to start. And I would move up my tank right now because I have the opportunity to do it. But I'm not going to do that because 
I'm not the AEO. Um, so we're going to basically choose this guy on the left here because he, you know, everyone else has fatigue. Um, we could pick the SS squad in the middle. Actually, that's not a bad idea. So let's 50-50 the SS squad who does not have a leader um, and does not have the machine gun or the, the infantry squad with the bazooka. So one, two, three, it's the bazooka. And I'm going to make a roll here. I'm rolling on a regular die. For it's a three. So the, yeah, the guy with the bazooka is going to move. So we're going to have him go over here. Should probably finish off the move from the infantry squad from last turn. Oh, I forgot to do that. Yep. I apologize. Okay. I do that all Let's go back. All the time. Yeah. So, and that's one reason why I, I will put the terrain card there because when it's there, I know it's there. So, in the upkeep phase, the first thing you do here is you're going to pick terrain for this. And um, it's a hill. And it says, may see into sector on the battlefield. I think that means any sector, any sector on the battlefield. Yeah. Basically, right. you uh, have clear line of sight to everywhere, regardless of any blocking or obscuring terrain, because you're sitting right. up on a hill and can see over everything. Right. And this is a beautiful thing for this unit, because there you go. They've only got, you know, rifles and stuff, but what what the heck? They are, however, spotted. Well, their hill is not a... Hill is blocking. There's, so, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're they still just spotted. get the spotted marker. And okay. conversely, but, since they can see anybody... Anybody can see that. Anybody so can that see that tank way in the back now has line of sight to the the hill unit. Uh, yeah, yep, sir. Um, so he may start opening up on them. We'll see. That's something I didn't have last game. <laughs> I didn't pick any. <laughs> um, so again, thank, uh, uh, we're back in the upkeep. You know, so we burned Mike the car. off. We went to the upkeep. Um, we finished the upkeep, which in this case is this. Uh, and now we go to the impulse phase. The impulse we determined was a. Uh, a move and a flank, and we now he's the closest to the enemy, but he's also fatigued. We're going to use the other guy who's closest to the enemy, which again is the guy with the bazooka. So we're going to set him up with a move and a terrain, and I'm going to do this now because I'm like, yeah, I don't want to forget. So this is what I do in my own personal games. You don't have to do this, but that way I know that that's got to get completed. And then of course he's spotted because Devin keeps reminding me because I'm terrible at spotting. <laughs> So the Germans are coming up over the, toward the bridge, and the Americans see them. Um, that is the end of the AEO for that impulse. Uh, again, I'm going to go try and go as fast as I can here. I think one, two, three. Yeah. My gone. The 30 caliber I have in C1, this thing here, has a range of four. And this is one, two, three, four. I think I'm going to take a shot at them because they're moving now, which makes a difference. Um, so I'm going to use my fire action on the squad with the machine gun and this fire group is basically the machine gun is two the squad is one that's three is that right correct all right um and then we're gonna do a die six off the cards oh great <laughs> one <laughs> so that's a grand total of four which is not as much as the stone building so it's kind of a moot point well, um, don't forget you also get a plus one because the opponent is under a move stage. Oh, well, that's true. So plus one. All right. So uh, basically that means I've got three, four, five. Um, so here I'm going to pull the die six for the Germans. And they get a four plus four for the terrain is eight. So nothing. Um, so the fire is done. I tried to fire, so I get a fatigue. I'm already spotted. And I believe that's it for me other than to draw my hand up. Okay, back to the AO. Again, first thing is burn a card. Second thing is do your upkeep. Now, there is a flow chart for the upkeep because there are sometimes more complex decisions to make. But this one's pretty simple because we're, you know, we're going to resolve this terrain first. And it's brush. And I think he's just going to take it. Hmm. I thought that was going to come up with me. Didn't. All right, he is spotted in the brush. They leave that lovely stone building behind. And that completes that move. Um, he is fatigued. I forgot to put a fatigue on last time. So now we've got a situation where we have three units fatigued and one not. And that completed the move. But now we have what's called a flanking act. A flanking action is where you are putting your unit in a sector in a position to get a plus two fire bonus until that other enemy unit, I think, moves? Yes. I'm not sure. Um, Devin, though, I only used it at, at like, one 
a range of one yesterday. Is it any range? Yeah, it's any it's any range. You can you can okay. you can you can nominate any unit. Uh, and uh, Venerix Alpha asks another right question: Could the AEO, AEO move in the sector? I am assuming he's talking about the infantry squad with the bazooka, and I'm going to assume that he's asking: Can he move inside his own sector? Yes, there are yes. in, in sector movements. Yes. Um, in fact, there's a there's a counter that instead of saying move says in sector move. What an in sector move does, it allows you to substitute a new terrain terrain card. Um, there's also a recon action, and one of the uses of the recon action is spotting attempt. Another is to collect terrain cards that you can then play when you do an in sector move, or you can play on an enemy unit. So you can sort of say, well, I've got a minefield. Play that minefield on the enemy move. I won't go into the details of that because we're not going to get that far in this. Um, but having that terrain cycle, you have a little bit of control terrain. The game has a little bit of control over terrain. But you can definitely swap the terrain that's there. The other major thing about terrain, if you'll allow me to digress for just for a moment, is that if there's nobody adjacent to that terrain, is it during the upkeep phase, Dev? Yes, during the upkeep phase. Um, if nobody's adjacent to a terrain card during the upkeep phase, it gets picked up off the map. And that's really important because your your battlefield is constantly evolving, which is sort of the way it runs. You know, it's, you know about terrain when you're focusing on a position. When you leave, who knows how big you know where where your you know where stuff is anymore. It's like you have a map, but you don't have like a GPS like we have nowadays. Well, actually, some people nowadays do. Um, <laughs> but that's really it, it. Really keeps every single game fresh. Absolutely, every single game fresh. The replay value on this game is. The more I play this, it's just insane. You know, you can play the same scenario every single time, but you're 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 never going to have the same scenario. That's why the scenarios themselves, to give the same flavor, fix certain terrains. So this tutorial, you know, th those clear terrains are fixed on either side of the bridge, but that doesn't mean you can't move into them and then do an insector, swap them out, and find oh look, there's the stone building next to the Arnhem Bridge. <laughs> well, not the Ar not the Arnhem Bridge because these aren't British, but there you go. When the Kickstarter, you'll get the British. You'll be able to do that. Um, all right, so let me loop back to where I was here. Um, so we have a flanking action we're going to do. Now, I, I think the machine gun in the middle for the Germans, and that would be this one here, um, the MG42 squad with the leader, I think they're going to try and do the flanking action, and they're going to try and flank the guys directly ahead of them. Now, flanking represents, like, within the sector getting a flanking position that, you know, it's, 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 there's a lot of space here. Um, so, you know, you, you can get an angle on somebody. If anybody's played, you know, indoor paintball, <laughs> you know, you sneak around in one of those boxes that nobody uses at the end and you're staring from the back rear of somebody. They don't even know you're there and paintball <laughs> drops in their lap and they kind of look up like, what happened? Where'd that come from? <laughs> it's kind of like that, except on a more serious level. Um, all right. So what we're going to do here is since they're spotted anyway, they're going to try and go for a flanking attempt. Um, I think I am going to have to have Devin refresh my memory on how I do that flanking attempt. Um, I it's think it is... It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dice roll. Yeah, it's the die roll, so, um... <laughs> you have to make a morale check against the guy doing the... Yeah, once, once a flanking action has been, has been played, conduct a 2d6 morale check. Unit with lowest morale must pass the check. Right, and this guy has a five. Can and can you use a leader on that? Can, can we get the bonus the for that? Leader modifier. Yep. All right. Good order so leaders we're, we're going to roll against a six on two die six with the cards. That's a five. Come on, get a one. No. Okay. So the flanking intent fails. Um, it is not a fatigue action, um, but that's the end of the action for the AO. Uh, so we go to my action. Well, hold on. Um, Let, let's explain a little bit what, what would have happened had you succeeded. We have these. Okay. Two, oh, yeah. We have a series of counters called flank A, uh, and they're different colors. You would put the green marker on the unit is, that is flanking, the red marker on the unit that is receiving the flank, and then any fire from the flank er to the flank E gets a plus two dice roll modifier. Right. So it would look like this. what i do <laughs> and so anytime this german machine gun and squad and leader fire against that particular squad they're going to get a plus two and that's extremely helpful when people are in nasty terrain yep. so you know flanking the stone building can be an effective way of mitigating it somewhat 
Yes, I did say mitigating. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I thank you for injecting that, Devin. Um, so that, but that's it for the AEO. You know, so you notice things are up. Um, and again, if you're playing this, running through the spread, the, the, the flow charts, the larger flow charts, which are the move uh, and and the fire ones. If you get to the end of them and nothing qualifies, you will drop into a spend discard action, which is another flow chart. They don't take long to go through. They don't really slow you down. You, you start to get used to them very quickly. Um, and there's always, because that spend discard mechanic exists in the game, when the AEO gets to it, the AEO will also have something to be able to do. There are very few times when the AEO may not, and there is a point where they can actually... Uh, in quotes, flush their hand because they don't have a hand, and that basically four cards get discarded from the deck. Um, but again, that's on the, the flowcharts themselves. Right now, we're kind of running with the way the flowcharts feel in a standard way because nobody's really been hit, and the fatigue is kind of even, kind of a thing. Um, again, I'm going to do something really fast. These Germans who moved into the brush and C1, I'm going to um, uh, continue to lay fire on them with my 30 caliber. So I'm going to play a uh since I didn't, nobody moved i'm going to play a fire action so that first starburst there is a fire action um and again i'm going to have two plus one for the squad is three um he is no longer moving uh, my line of sight is clear um so i'm just going to roll the die six plus the three this is the fun part oh there we go nine so the Germans uh, have one for the brush, and their die six. Oops, hang on. Flip, there we go. Oh, wow. Uh, one plus two is three. Okay, so I've got nine? Yep. Yeah. Nine minus three is six. So they're going to make a damage check. A d6 roll plus the, mod plus the uh, differential. Right. And the differential is 6 plus 4 is 10. And if we go to the damage table, excuse me, his morale is 5. So that's twice his morale. So for a good order unit, if you do twice less than 3, it is shaken and reduced. Oh my goodness, we're actually going to use the half squad. Um, so I'm going to move him off here. Move him over here. Grab this infantry squad. Oh, you got one. You, you got it? He's yeah. got it. All right. So shaken is on the back of the spotted markers. So, there you go. That's what you get for moving through brush against an American machine gun. That seems to, that seems to feel right. Um, <laughs> however, yep. our fatigue goes to two. Now, two, for those who have read the rules, uh, basically mean, you know, one doesn't have any effect. Two, you start to take, I think it's a minus two for fire. There's a couple of other things. You start, you know, it, you're fatigued. So you, you really You can't need melee. To... You take minus two to your firepower, minus two to ordnance checks. There's a couple, there, there, there's about six right. things that happen when you're at fatigue. Right. So when you're at two, you really kind of, that's when you want to do a ready action to kind of reduce that to one. Um, and you, if you do a second one, maybe get it off or, or you can uh, um, take one off of, of another unit. So that was my action. I'm going to pull a card to fill up my hand. And we're going to proceed to the AEO. So the AEO draws a card. Just burns a card, I should say. Um, I'm going to look at the upkeep. Is there any upkeep here? Uh, there's nobody moving. Uh, there's nobody swapping weapons. If I were going to give the SS squad here the machine gun, I would do it now. If anybody was interested. But I'm not interested in doing that. I'm going to stick to my original plan. And just going to make sure these guys are forward. Okay. Um, the, sp those, the spotted markers stay, by the way, until you move out of there. And I mean, I mean they, they come with you as you move out of there, but you have to re-enter cover to do that. Uh, part of it, one of the things you can do with a cover action. Um, so I'm going to roll for the AEO on the table. A 3-5 or an 8. 3-5 is a ready action. There you go. And boy, do they need it. Okay, now the difference between a ready, ready removes fatigue, so that's the yellow markers, all right? Rally attempts to remove shaken, and you need a leader to do that. A leader needs to be present. So right now... No, a um, leader does not need to be uh, oh, it present doesn't, to rally. 
Oh, I'm sorry. A leader. That's lock and load tactical. (laughs) And that's that's one of the things that a lot of people will probably have to retrain themselves. Some leaders do have rally actions like Lieutenant Werner here, and he can do that as his action in sector. But any unit can rally by playing the card and you don't need a leader to rally. Which is really helpful. Yes, it is. So, but this was a ready action we got. So it's about fatigue. Um the flow chart would I think the ready ready action is a really short flow chart if I remember correctly. Yes. Um it's basically so it, it's kind of a fifty fifty as to which one you do first, but it's important because the first one is free, gets removed. The second one you have to make a morale check and if you do it comes off. No, it's so I'm gonna the, the second one is a fifty fifty shot of getting the second one off. Oh sorry, it's it's right, it's, it's a one two three. It's a, you roll a one two three. So in this case, though, I'm going to roll a one, two, three as the guy with the leader is going to take the first one. Four, five, six is the other one. So the leader guy, he decides to take this off. And then if I roll a one to three and I'm going to pull a card for that, then the other one is removed and it is not. So now we have the the unit that is closest to the enemy with least fatigue is this fire group in the middle. But they're done. Um, go to my stuff. I have a move, a move, cover... Uh, I think I'm going to use the cover for something I don't normally... The recon to enter cover. I, I can do that. Oh, wait, I'm wrong. wrong. It's the wrong card. I use the cover card. I want to re-enter cover. I really don't want to be spotted there. Um, all right, Devin, I forget how to do that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I know I can do that. Uh, okay, basically okay. it is against the morale... And okay, so taking a look at the infantry squad, they do have that question mark of plus two as one of their abilities, and that is right. them re entering concealment. So they'll get that bonus to their dice roll. Basically, it's a morale test, but I cannot remember if the terrain gets added in as well. Let me check that real quick. Thank you very much. Sorry for the pause, guys. It is there. There are subtleties that uh, you know. I, when I'm playing, I, I kind of <laughs> I'll take the time to go back to the rules. Um, oh no! Yeah, to, to conceal a unit, it's not a morale tech. It's just a straight up D6. Units can units are concealed on a roll of six plus. Uh, add a unit's concealment check to the modifier. Any leadership modifiers. Right. So he's but got a plus two. No we need terrain. Six. All right, so he needs a six with a plus two, and five plus two is seven. All right, so this comes off, uh, and that goes off, and that's my action. And I add a card in here. I'm, I'm not really tracking what I have in my hand about the AEO. So, all right. And uh, so David, then... Dave, David did make a comment. Uh, one thing we kind of have been glossing over with this mm-hmm. tutorial scenario. Don't forget, there are heroes in the game. When you roll a one on a damage check, you have a chance to create a hero. There also is low ammo. And I think if you roll a six on the attack check, then you have a chance of going yeah. low ammo. We've six kind chance of low ammo. been glossing over that because we're just trying to focus on the AEO. But yes, there are there are right. more rules in the game. And yes. if you want yeah. to take the a look six... at the rules, the rules are available online in the uh, Lock and Load uh, digital library. Yeah, the six I rolled for the Americans, though, um, uh, because their na- national attribute is plentiful ammo, that affects you know whether there would have been low ammo. I think they don't go low ammo, if I'm remembering, but I only read that once, so I don't remember. <laughs> but yeah, you're tr- it's it's absolutely true. Um, heroes, did I roll a one and not? Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> At any rate, um, I don't think we have the hero cards out at this point. But um, all right, so the AO bur- I, I burned a card, right? I believe you did. Yes. Up, upkeep, nothing for upkeep. And so let's go roll. And two, three. And that's a move and a flank again. All right. So, um, again, the units that are closest with least fatigue um, would be the ones most likely picked for for move off of the the, um, the flow chart. So that's this center fire group here. Um, and I think that makes sense for them to charge the bridge at this point. Um, so we're going to do that. If 
fatigue one. They're already spotted. Fatigue one for him. And remember, leaders don't get fatigued, just so you know. Um, the leader should do an action, but there's nothing... Oh, yeah, I guess he can do an action. It says leaders should do... Uh, you know, One of the things is uh, it, that are in the solo rules are that leaders should always do a leader action. So one of the leader actions for Lieutenant Werner here is uh, a rally, and one is a ready. So I think he's rallied. I, he, I believe he can do... Correct me if I'm wrong here, Devin. He can do his leader action outside of the sector he's in. No, those are correct? only for the sector he is in. So okay. he has right. a rally, but the shaken unit is not in the same sector, so he can't use that rally action. He could only use it in in the sector he's in. He has gotcha. a ready action. However, you cannot use a leadership's ready action to bleed off fatigue the, that just fatigue appeared. That was just occurred in this turn. Right. Right. Um, now, okay. Yeah. No, no, that's fine. No, no, no. I, I you, you're, you're, you're good. Okay. Um, so that was the move action, and then there's the flanking action. So here's again, um, the least fatigue is actually the tank in the back, but he doesn't have a line of sight to anybody, so uh, he can't do a flanking action, as far as I understand. Um, the group in the middle is moving, so. They did an action. Um, the squad on the right, over here, um, on the hill, I, I think they are eligible to do a flanking action because the shaken guy isn't. So it sort of narrowed it down itself. Um, so let's do a flanking action on. Uh, what's his range? His range of his rifles is three, so he's just going to go straight ahead to the guys in the wood building over here um, and try and flank them. And again. We do our morale check. Uh, three. Two is five. He makes it. So, uh, I guess it's green as these guys. He has flanked them. And that's his action. Now, you notice the flanking action itself, you're not going to get to sh <laughs> Um, I found that out yesterday when I was playing <laughs> Solitaire. Um, no, you're not going to shoot two. So, it was, it was, it was a real risk. Um, so right now it looks like everybody's still sort of establishing the fire bases in the Germans. Um, we are running a little over. Um, I do want to ask you guys if you have any major questions. And again, I apologize for, for none of the flow charts, but uh, like I said, like Devin said, we don't have those. And you, you should, you know, once you get the game and you see the flow charts, that's like, look through those. Um, we've been looking through them and playing with them directly. Uh, but this will give you the flavor for how it um, and again, there's more detail involved in the flowcharts because questions that pop up when you have um, transports involved, for example, uh, and some other odds and ends, and when to flush the AA kind of. Plus, so, plus, if you plus, guys want to, plus, I will also say the flowcharts have probably changed about oh, I don't know, half a dozen times in the last week. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty we, solid when I played with them yesterday. <laughs> we're, 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 we've been yeah. refining and defining and. Uh, and finding the loopholes and, and fixing all the uh, the issues that we're discovering. Oh, look what I just found. Hard copy next to my desk. <laughs> that wouldn't help. <laughs> it doesn't help to, to show you guys. Um, so, yeah, if you guys want to um, uh, put your put your questions in for the moment, um, uh, I'll stay on for a couple minutes uh, with Devin here. and, and uh... Also, well, I j did just want to point out that uh, the Kickstarter for this point blank is over on Tuesday, uh, the seventh. So you've got a couple days from this stream to be able to get over there. We're we've we've hit our goal. All the stretch goals have been unlocked. So I mean, it, there, there's it, there's a ton of stretch goals. I mean, with the stretch. Yeah, goals, you're getting the Brit. You're getting you're getting the British. You're getting the Canadian. Getting a whole bunch um, of other vehicles. Whole getting a lot of, of scenarios equipment. to go with them. As partisans, yeah. I mean, there's there's like 900 cards with all the stretch goals or something silly. Eight or 900 cards, something silly. It's just the box is nine pounds. So right, I mean, you get nine, eight, nine pounds of cards and stuff. It's it's 85 dollars <laughs> to buy in. All the stretch goals are unlocked. Go over to Kickstarter. Just look for Point Blank. You'll be able to find it. Do that. Also, just want to let everybody know that we currently do have a sale going on on the company store uh, for uh, all, basically everything that's on store. Obviously not the Kickstarter, but uh, everything else. Uh, I 
can't remember what the what the what the I think it's a 20 25 percent it's a Labor Day sale it's either Labor Day 35 30, it's oh, 35. It 35 oh, okay well there you I go so, yeah and the code is L N L P labor so lock and load publishing well L N L P labor so yeah uh, I will put that in the comment section below so when this goes up on YouTube that uh you'll be able to see it that code will probably be good uh until tuesday as well maybe i think it expires on tuesday so 35 percent, and that is on top of any other uh discounts you may personally have can't stack other codes with it but i, I think everything right now is currently 20 percent off anyways we had that we had that going on for a while uh and so this will just stack another 35 percent on top of whatever whatever other discounts we've got going on right now uh and no one thank you guys yeah, thank you guys for uh, for watching. And, uh, oh, okay, so David just popped in. The sale ends on September 12th. So the sale is going to go. Uh, go for another week. Uh, Venerx Alpha pops in, says, everything looks great. Thanks for the demo. Already back. Thank you, sir. We do appreciate that. Who else did we have in the stream? A lot of people here, but nobody talking. Bottom of the six, Demi Mad, D and D Doc, Glider Twenty Two, Hatcher Jack, Hoss Zero Zero Three One Two, Stepman Seventy Six, and of course Venerx Alpha. And boss man himself david heath was here as well <laughs> yeah david am i fired no 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 i don't think so uh and also we do have the digital don't forget about the digital library i will go ahead and put the link for that in oh, yeah. the comment section below as well uh because it's a very long text and I url yeah, it's, it's a long url so um keith Sir, do you have anything left? Um, I'm, uh, no, I think I think we covered uh, pretty much as much as we could cover. Um, hope everybody got a good feel for it. Uh, it's you know, and the game itself, it's really fast. It's fun. Um, that deck, you know, gets done before you know it. There's a turn <laughs> going, and then you're on the next turn, and you're like, wait, I don't have enough time. <laughs> Especially when you do lots of shooting and lots of melee actions, it goes real yeah, yeah. quick. It's it accelerates when you get closer, and now you're like, I want one shot, and. Then <laughs> <laughs> all righty well i guess we'll go ahead and call it a stream then everybody thanks for coming out mr keith appreciate you coming out and doing this demonstration always a us. pleasure always a pleasure questions comments concerns complaints criticisms in the comment section below i'll talk to everybody later see ya